If you got a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And I'm going to start reading in verse 1. And I'm not going to read much of this, but just a little bit to get started here. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 1. I'll read my scripture. I'm going to ask Doug this morning if he would lead us in prayer. And the Bible says, And Jesus answered and spoke unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who made a marriage for his son and went forth and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants and said, Tell them who are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fattens are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the mercy. Most of you already know about these scriptures that I've just read to you. As we can see here, he's talking about the kingdom of God. How it's like a prepared a, a marriage for his son. And he sent his servants out to said, bait them or invite them in to the wedding. But they would not come. He sent them out again. And he said that his dinner was prepared and ready. And they began to make excuses why they couldn't make it. This is a picture of you and I as we go out on a church field and invite people to the house of God. Many times they'll make light of it. And sometimes you think they'll listen to every word you say, but right then it don't soak in. But Romans 1.20, the Bible said that we are left without an excuse. As you and I can look around and see the clouds and everything, see the grass that grows, winter comes and winter goes and summer comes and summer goes. And we know that there's a higher power somewhere. And the Bible says we can see it in His creation. We can see it in the animals. We can see it in the vegetation. We can see it in the clouds, stars. You can see the Lord everywhere. But still many times as we talk to people... They just ignore it. Now you and I, we might ignore a lot of things in this walk of life. And people might ignore a lot of things that you and I talk about. But I'm here to tell you there are some things that are so important you don't need to ignore it. And that is the things of God. You know, the Bible tells us a lot of things about when God deals with mankind, not to ignore that, to accept it. This certain king here sent forth this servant out to call him to the wedding. And he told him all things was ready to come into the marriage. The Bible said, but they made light of it and went their ways and one to his farm and another to the merchandise in Matthew 22 and 5. What he is saying here, they thought more of the things of the world than they did the things of God. 
And you know, you and I, when we put something between us and God Almighty and interference with our relationship with Him, we're headed for trouble. I don't care who we are. The Bible said he went to one, went to his farm, and another to his merchandise. Just like the ones in Luke chapter 14, 16, and 24. And they prepared a supper. When a man sent out his servants to bid them to come in, the Bible said they all, one consent, began to make an excuse. One of them had bought five yoke and oxen. The other had bought a spot of land. The one that got married, and he just could not come. I tell you, when we leave God out of the things that you and I do, we ain't doing a thing in the world but accepting action for trouble. And some people don't believe that. You know, a lot of people in this world today even take their convictions very, very light and they ignore it. I tell you what, when God convicts you of something, you do not tell you, you need to take that lightly. You need to take it serious. Because if it wasn't something serious, God would not even deal with you on it. Listen to what Romans 14, 22 and 23 tells us. Has thy faith, have it to thyself. Before God, happy is he that condemneth not himself in the things which he allows. You know, you can condemn your own self to things you allow and going on in your life. He that doubt is damned if he eat, because he is not of faith, and whatsoever is not of faith is a sin. You must have faith in everything you and I do. It's just like you come in and sit down in one of these chairs. If you didn't believe that thing's going to hold you up, you wouldn't sit down in it. If you didn't believe your car was going to start, you wouldn't go out there and be a cranking on it. You got faith that that thing's going to run when you get in it. You got faith that chair is going to hold you up. And you better have faith in God that He's going to take care of you too. The Bible says, whatever we do without faith, He said it's a sin. And another thing, a conscience that is continually ignored by the Spirit of God when He's dealing with you. It can be seared as a hot arm. Like in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot arm. Paul said in 1 Timothy 4 and 6, he said, If thou put thy brother in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursing up in the word of faith and of a good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. We need to be warned of these things. Because when God sears your Conscious at a hot arm. You might not never have another opportunity to be saved. As a brother taught in a Sunday school lesson this morning, God opens a door, a man can't shut it. When God shuts a door, you ain't going to get it open. And if we keep turning down the Spirit of God and our conscience, it can be seared and God might not deal with you no more. 
You look in the first chapter of Proverbs, and he said, when he has stretched out his hand, and no man regarded. In other words, he has called, and he's called, and he's called, and they refused. Then he went on to say, when you, your fear cometh, I will not hear you. What he is saying, I've dealt with you, and I've dealt with you, and I've shut you off. I've shut the door. And you can cry out to God all you want to, and He ain't going to hear you. It's a dangerous thing. We do not know exactly where the limit line is. I don't. Sometimes God deals with people. He dealt with me 30 some years before I surrendered. And every time that He speaks to you and I, that could be the last time. People today consider their influence out into the world very lightly. And I'll tell you what, your influence out in the world is worth more to you than refined gold, if you just understand it. People watches you and I just like a hawk. They know more how that we're supposed to live than we do ourselves sometimes. Waiting for you and I to make a bad mistake. And if you make one, I guarantee you it'd be all over the state of Tennessee before you get home. But if you do something good, it travels a little slow sometimes. First Timothy 4 and 12 said, Let no man despise thy due, but thy in an example of the believers. In word and in conversation, which is a manner of your life, and charity, which is love, and spirit, and faith, and purity. People can see how you and I live. I know it ain't been long, probably about a year ago, I came to church. When I got back home, I had a guy down way down the road down there. He come by the house. He said, Brother Bill, he said, I made, made, made some of your friends mad today. And I said, what happened? He said, I passed by and they was in your car poured out there fumbling around. He said, I stopped and want to know what they're doing. And they left. And I said, well, there wasn't nobody supposed to have been there as I know of. He said, what I, that's what I figured because every time on Sunday morning, people knows where you're at. They know what time you and I go to church and when we don't go to church, and we say that we're going to the house of God and ain't going nowhere. God knows if nobody else don't. Yeah. Romans 14 and 19 said, Let us therefore follow after the things which made for peace, the things wherewith one may edify another. Instead of building myself up all the time, I'm supposed to build you up in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. You may believe in one thing and I may believe in another. But I'll tell you what, if you believe in God and you had your heart cleaned up, we're still brothers and sisters in Christ. we got different beliefs. Our lives is different. Ain't none of us the same. That's one of the hardest things there is of being a pastor, trying to please everybody, and ain't every one of you the same. You make one sometime happy, you make another mad. But if it's a word of God, you get mad at God and not me. People will ignore the Word of God so many times and go on and do whatever their little heart desires. Matthew 22 and 5 said they made light of it and went their ways and uh, uh, 
one to his farm and others in merchandise. I tell you what, there are a lot of people today that's probably down on the lake riding around and stuff like that. Some just kicked back, maybe watching a ball game or something, instead of going to church. But I'm here to tell you, I'd rather be in a house of God be anywhere this morning. One day we'll be judged. A lot of people think, well, I'm a Christian, I've got it made. You know where the judgment of God really going to start at? In the house of God. With God's people. Listen to what it said in John 12, 47 and 48. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him. Not for I come not to judge the world, but to save the world. See, Jesus don't judge you and I. He come to seek and to save. But listen to what He went on to say. He that reject me and receiveth not my words have one that judges him. And the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. You be judged by the word of God. Now listen to what he went on to say in the writing of the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, every one that received the thing done in his body according to that he had done, whether it's good or bad. 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18, listen to what it says. It's coming to us. For the time is come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall then be of them that obey not the gospel? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? See, a lot of people don't understand that and don't even know probably it's even in the Bible. It'll start with you and I, and because it'll start with you and I in the house of God, is because there are some counterfeits in some places. Claiming to be a child of God, and they ain't a bit more born again than nothing. And He'll weed it out. But those of us been born into the family of God, I'm here to tell you, we're going to be all right in the end. But it's going to start and be cleaned up one of these days. Because there's some places just a gathering and it's not a church. And it calls Psalms 9 and 17, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And this nation is going downhill. And it's going downhill fast. And the only thing going to ever turn it around is them turn to God. And I tell you the only thing the Bible says that their time come, the only ones that's going to be able to stand is those that is planted into the house of God. God's people. I don't know your hearts here this morning, but I do know as we read this story, listen what he said at the end. If I can find it. He says, there's one here come in without a wedding garment on. And I want to tell you something, you cannot slip into the family of God trying to be a good person and all that. 
You got to come by the door of the sheep flow, and that's through Jesus Christ. And he said unto him, Friend, why come us in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said unto the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be wailing and a gnashing of teeth. Many are called, but few are chosen. And while they ain't chosen, they will not dedicate themselves to God. Just as simple as that. He didn't have his garment on. You get that white robe when you get saved. God looks down and recognizes every one of us. If there's a black sheep in the, in the crowd, God knows that. And he will not make it until he gets that garment put on. Just as simple as that.